Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Digital Foundry Live Play. And today I'm looking at the official version of Minecraft RTX in its beta form releasing on Thursday, the 16th of April, 2020. And to talk about this very special game, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, John Linneman, who is not in game with me currently, but virtually watching me play. So how are you doing there, John? Yes, I'm doing pretty good. I wish I could have joined you virtually within the game, but uh, you know, these, that's how betas go sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes just things don't work out the way you want it. But I can still see what you're doing. Thanks to the magic of the internet. The magic of the internet. And here, right now, I set the time of day to a very specific kind of golden hour that I really, really like. Mm. And that, you know, soft sunlight and the volumetrics coming across the trees. And here... No rain, though, huh? No rain. I've turned off all the weather <laughs> effects. <to laughs> um, um, I've turned off all the weather effects to kind of give me the exact conditions Perfect. that I want. And, and this house here that I built showcases a number of the special kind of path tracing um, effects that players can come to expect uh, when they download the game for themselves on the 16th and some very, very exclusive effects that basically only this game can really do that I tried to single out. So you'll see some stuff that you might have seen in a videos of us before, but also some new stuff. What I love is, uh, is how you actually recreated your real house in Minecraft. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward know, to right? see this virtualized within the world of Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. I love the uh, the re the reflective uh, awnings there or over your yeah that's yeah. There's this really cool. So I should talk about it right away. There's I'm currently using the HD texture pack that that you can download separately as a resource, and it replaces a number of the Minecraft textures. So you can see some of the default textures right here, obviously that have been updated to be PBR compliant. And then there's obviously these high resolution textures with very specific uh, physically based materials. So like this one up above is a kind of really dark oak wood that has been polished. And that I just really like the way it looks. And I'm combining it here with um, some concrete, some white concrete. If after watching this video, you want to download this level, take a look in the description below to find a link to download this level and as well a link to fill out a survey. Um, basically, we're trying to figure out some of our viewership demographics and it would really help us out if you filled out that survey. Exactly. But enough of that for now. <laughs> but so let's let's get to the, the base of this. Okay. So I'm going to just enter it right here. And now this, this, the reason why I made the entrance so strange looking is I wanted to show off the extent to which lighting can bounce in this game. Uh, based upon the way they did the tra path tracer, diffuse lighting can bounce essentially over a number of periods of frames up to eight times. So I built in these areas blocking off direct paths of light. So you'll see all the bounces coming in. So you have like the first hit right there and then a bounce to this wall and then a bounce to this wall, and then a bounce to that wall, a bounce to this uh -huh. wall. And you can see it getting progressively darker as you go in until it essentially you don't get almost any light and there's nothing lighting the scene right now except for indirect lighting and that's amazing because yeah without indirect lighting all of this would just be black and you know yeah. games would have to rely on placed lights you know that are dynamic mm -hmm. and you know you'd have to go through and carefully light everything but here it's just relying on the light from the sun bouncing off the different surfaces which you know that's how reality yeah. works so <laughs> i think it's ultra impressive in the end and it, it gets so dark here uh but then i obviously want to show off some other effects too so let's go into our next room boop boop i don't even know how to use a controller in this game apparently one second uh Aha! I guess we should. Know. Ah, there it is. Sometimes uh, you know it's worth it's worth using a controller when doing videos because it allows for smooth camera panning. Precisely why I'm doing this. So let's close my door. Boop. Um, oh, you're clipping through the wall in a strange way. Oh yeah, that's because your hand in Minecraft is not doesn't actually exist. It's just like you know floating. Oh, yeah. Uh, it does that in the normal game. Ooh, what are these materials? So these are um, colored um, concrete and also glass. And this Ooh. room actually doesn't want to show off anything really in particular, other than the fact that this is not naturally lit by the sun, but there are blocks in the game which emit light based upon their surface. So this is just a white, white block 
giving off pure white light. And if you look really closely, it's a little hard to see probably, but the color of the shadowing yeah. on each side is slightly tinged, like red as it is here, by the blocks themselves um, kind of giving off that light that's being reflected onto them. Oh. So blocks themselves were going to kind of become area lights and then other blocks that are reflecting that light become area lights themselves and change the color of the surrounding. So this is just a purely white room, which is really interesting because you don't actually need a lot of light to light anything to see all these kind of like shadows and effects. Here in this room, I'm actually lighting the entire room just by an opening out to the sky. And even in this room right here, where there's almost no light, you can see tons of contrast. Uh, and that's partially uh, because you're seeing eight bounces of light. And like you can see these distinct shadows behind yeah. uh, these concrete uh, barriers that I put up. As well because uh, the game has like an automatic exposure because it's an HDR. So it's going to make this room slightly brighter, uh, kind of like a camera would. Yeah, the very natural fall off of the lighting and shadows. And we've seen stuff like this before, of course, in like Quake 2. Uh, with path tracing, yeah, for instance, but it's very convincing. Like I feel like this is actually some of the most realistic and uh, enjoyable aspects of playing a game with uh, ray tracing or path tracing enabled. Yeah, and like in a normal game, this would be lit with something like probes or with uh, baked yeah. lighting. So I couldn't, like for example, edit this and see what happens. So now this is one thing that you'll see, it, like. The, the shadow immediately goes away, more or less. Uh, there is technically a bit of temporal lag occasionally because yep. it is generating over a number of frames. But you can actually edit the environment while getting these really nice, distinct, indirect shadows, which I find really, really cool. Uh, so you can imagine all the really cool gameplay spaces that you can make with indirect lighting, which is what I tried to do in the next room, which is very much so like the room I made back in April of last year covering the mod version of Path Tracing for this game where I kind of just wanted to create naturally lit spaces showing off a bunch of different materials uh, and the way they react to indirect and direct lighting. Like here on the wall you see there's metallic panels right next to this kind of, uh, I don't know what you would call that, uh, gravelly <laughs> stone or something like that. Gravelly stone, yeah. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure what that it, is yeah. exactly, but uh, let me just get on the ground here and stop floating. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of different materials in this room, which kind of show off once the fact that this is only really being lit by um, the kind of outdoor lighting and a little bit of direct sunlight hitting that kind of terracotta uh, red tiles that I put against the wall. And Are there different uh, types of reflective material with like different glossy oh, values yeah. that you can use to get more of like a mirror like sheen? Yeah, so like for example, or... the floor here. Um, so if actually, if I can probably show it off right here a bit, you can see that there's two different levels of gloss uh, oh, yeah. regarding the metal or the extremely polished wood. And then next to that is the very, very matte uh, looking concrete. And if I technically get really close up to this terracotta, um, you'll see also that it, if you get it at a grazing angle, oh. it also reflects uh, the sky because it has like yeah, the Fresnel effect that. occurring with it where objects, the more you look at them uh, at an angle, the angle of reflectance uh, incre or decreases or increases actually, then they become more reflective. So here you can see that even something that normally wouldn't be super reflective at an angle reflects the sky and actually a bit of the house itself. Um, and I just kind of love the orange glow that it gets here. It looks extremely natural <laughs> beyond the fact that I'm looking at what are just essentially like very simplistic blocks. Um, and I think a lot of people, want, like anyone, can appreciate the impact that this has and the visual quality. Mm -hmm. As a lot of games do often attempt this sort of like reflective room effect. Uh, and it's typically like a combination of like cube maps or some other solution combined mm -hmm. with screen space reflections. And anyone knows that placing screen space reflective surfaces uh, on like sort of a vertical strip, like on a wall, uh, is is 
always going to result in a lot of nasty artifacts. Yeah. Because you're constantly blocking the source of the reflection, obviously, because it's not, you know, in the screen space. Uh, and it just ends up looking glitchy. Where here, you can see, like, everything is always reflected beautifully, no matter what's on the screen, because it is not derived from screen space. Yeah. So. And so, like, here, a great example is in the polished oh, wood yeah. behind me, you can see the reflection in a very, obviously, diffused way, because uh, I'm not looking at it at some sort of angle, but it's just like, that's what's behind me, the tree and, that, and That's everything. so key with how it simulates the reflections, I think, because uh, you really do have such a realistic look as a result of that. Yeah, and uh, just to say what I'm running on, I'm playing the game on a RTX 2080 Ti, Ryzen 3900X, 32 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 megahertz on an NVMe SSD. And I'm typically playing the game at 4K with DLSS, which is an internal 1080p resolution in this game. The DLSS works in tiers where the higher resolutions you go, uh, the kind of lower the internal resolution gets relatively. So oh. it's performance mode at 4K. 1440p is balanced mode, which is like 835p uh, internally. And then if you go to 1080p or lower technically, uh, that would be the quality mode, so an internal 720p uh, when utilizing DLSS. This is the heaviest ray trace game to date in the beta form, and it's still being optimized. I could play the game generally at 4K on my level, getting a really good 60 FPS with a small uh, drop occasionally here or there for really unknown reasons. Um, but then going underwater, uh, would cause the frame rate to dip on my level into like the middle 50s essentially. So going underwater is more expensive than being on the land in this game and it will drop your frame rate probably if you're running very close to full GPU utilization. On custom levels with a lot of water and a lot of content, like tons of uh, torch lights and things like that, uh, being on land there will be 60 FPS on this GPU at 4K uh, DLSS, but going underwater, uh, for some reason in that specific instance, drops the FPS quite a lot oh. more. I also tried the game out on a RTX 2060, so the lowest end RTX GPU you can get. There I played initially at 1080p with DLSS, which is basically a very similar situation to playing at 4K DLSS on the RTX 2080 Ti. So smooth 60s FPS for most of my custom level, but then going underwater will dip my frame rate. I saw actually a slightly higher dip in frame rate when going underwater on one of those custom levels, for example. So it is technically dips a little bit more relatively at 1080p um, on this card. Going up to 4K on this card with internal DLSS 1080p uh, is really not possible because it will um, run out of VRAM, so it'll be running really well at like around 30 FPS actually uh, at 4K DLSS, and then dip below heavily when it runs out of VRAM, so it'll drop into like the middle teens uh, in frame oh. rate. So that's not really doable on a card like this. For anything higher than 1440p, I would say you're going to need 8 gigabytes of VRAM. And uh, 1440p, for example, on the RTX 2060 was mid 40s, mid 50s, depending upon what you're doing and obviously going underwater, making that much more expensive. So if you're playing this game on an RTX series card, definitely turn on DLSS because it basically looks like the real output resolution, uh, as you can see from these side by sides, and it runs so much better if you're low end like rtx 2060 stick to 1080p i would say for 60 fps if you get beyond the uh, rtx 2060s and 2070 series you can look at 1440p if you're playing on like an rtx 2080 or 2080 ti or 2080s you can look at 4k but i would also recommend uh, something like 3200 by 1800 as a custom resolution which will then be internally 900p and run way better with no chance of dropping. For example, for this stream that I'm showing you right now of me playing the game, I'm actually playing at 3200 by 1800 with DLSS because I'm also at the same time transmitting the video on the same PC over to John so he can yeah. watch me play, which has a slight GPU impact and I didn't want any dropped frames for this video. So 1800p also looks pretty great. Uh, so let's go into the next room where I want to show off some more specific things that we've seen before. Oh, I, rem I remember uh, this. You recreated this room, I re basically. <laughs> basically like, recreated. new and improved. New and improved. Um, You've got the beveled ceiling there. Yeah, I know, right? I, I mean, 
you know, I have my aesthetic choices, John. I like things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, here in this room, I just wanted to show that, you know, that there's two things. Basically, is that there's the addition in this version of Minecraft uh, with, RT, you know, RTX driven, where they use a frustum aligned voxel grid to simulate volumetric fog. And that volumetric fog that you see pouring into the room here and being lit and shadowed is actually lit and shadowed by the information information from path tracing which is the first time i've actually ever seen this in a game the way it's done in quake 2 rtx is actually slightly different where i'm pretty sure they generate like a like a really rough shadow map of the scene to do that and here they actually do it all via path tracing so you'll see that flowing in from the outside in at the same time i wanted to show off something that i showed off in a previous video before where the light that sunlight, which is almost kind of pure white, a little yellow, coming in, slamming into the wall right here with these different colors, bounces light in diffused lighting, like you see here, yeah. where it turns the wall purple. And also, you can see the reflection of that light hitting the wall on surfaces that are less matte and more kind of glossy. Like here, there's some marble on the ground right next to the concrete to show off just kind of how different it can look. And obviously, you can see that in the marble on the other side as well. You'll notice though that you can't see my pl carrier, player character in the reflection because technically Minecraft, uh, the way it's programmed and it doesn't have to do with the path tracing, you don't actually have a third pl person character model in Minecraft unless you turn on the third person character option. Uh, oh. So you'd play the game in third person to have a third person character model. Yeah, uh, and in this corner, I really wanted to specifically oh. show off how bounce light colors. can combine with other colors so here the red's being hit full on by the sun and it's bouncing red light everywhere which is right next to a blue that actually looks like that but the bounce light hitting it is making it it's basically violet. Look violet especially at the yes. corner where it almost looks basically violet uh, it's a really cool effect and you can do this obviously with any of the kind of color effects like yellow and greens or making your own greens with yellow and blue i tried doing all that stuff but you know we only I have thought this was a safe for work video. <laughs> I'm not so sure now. Yeah, I'm just, this, is, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Now, this room doesn't really have much purpose other than to be very relaxing. Oh, the, the temporal artifacting there was pretty severe. That, that's one thing you can see. Um, uh, their current denoiser <laughs> is not, uh, what is the word, adaptive. It has like a flat scaling for how it cleans up uh, the so-called irradiance cache, which is how it bounces light more than two times uh, so when i really dramatically change the lighting from a dark to a, a light scene you can see a bit of temporal lag and that's something that is yeah, in the beta form time. of the game that they are going to try and fix for the eventual full release and this room is just you know just thought it'd be really relaxing like flowing water underneath the floorboards getting these that's really cool idea. Um, oh, look at that. Multiple shadows where there's like one, two, three different uh, bounces yeah. of light causing different gradations of shadow. And oh, even man. if you look in the shadow, it's slightly t tinged yellow because of the wood that it's reflecting off of. So there's just a lot of really subtle nuances to the light in this room. And it, you know, I can hear the flowing water. I'm very relaxed. Minecraft is just such a relaxing experience. I made this map, by the way, as you'll see, in about the span of a day. So it really enables your creativity when lighting just kind of works like you expect it to. Going to this room, it's a very small room as we go on to the actual the, the next area ahead, but I wanted to show off kind of how the transparency works in the game, where if you look through this glass that I set up here, you can see how it distorts and refracts the light behind it, kind of changing the way it looks, and it will distort the light. And another thing that it does is light will transmit through it. This is white glass, slightly frosted, and as light goes through it, it'll darken slightly. So underneath here, you can see that I left the space open oh, yeah. where the sun directly comes in, and it's not being obscured by the glass. And that area on the ground yeah. is slightly lighter than the area ahead of it that is slightly shadowed because the glass is actually darkening the light going through it. 
and you can see that affecting the shadow of my hand so you can as well. Sim- you can actually simulate tinted glass. Yep, and in real time, they have even I think like gray glass and black glass, so you can get like obsidian kind of color schemes going on, which is really. I'd cool. like to build a house out of black glass. <laughs> that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, this area I wanted to show off uh, two things Ooh. specifically. There's this kind of in Minecraft. There's like natural fountains that kind of form. Uh, and I just kind of built that into the house here. So you can see this water where if I look through to the other side, much like the glass, it's distorting the background around it. But if you kind of go to the other side of it, you'll see much like the glass itself too, it has it affects the color of the sunlight going through it. And since the water is moving, it changes the way that oh, kind of looks. So, so you cool. get this awesome oh, caustic man. effect. Uh, on the ground, which is just this is really beautiful. amazing looking. Yeah. Um, and and l- l- how does that look in the reflection there? Uh, uh, let me get o- left, over uh, behind you. This one right here. No, no, no behind you. Uh, it's, oh, uh, over there. Oh, there. Yeah. You can see the the reflection of the caustics in there. Let me get. Uh, it's, crouching in Minecraft is not actually <laughs> that doesn't get you that much closer to the ground, but. Uh, not effective it's uh, a little hard to see without getting really yeah. up close uh, but it also should technically be updating yeah, in the yeah. same way um, so you get these really cool water caustics that of course occur underwater and I'll show that off in a second but another cool thing in this room along with like the different materials is I put gold blocks along the wall and gold as a material is cool because it's specular value as in the light that reflects off of it is the color of gold itself so it's like it tinges everything yellow so the entire world in the reflection of gold is tinged yellow and that means the blue of the water is made teal essentially in the reflection uh which is completely rare uh you don't see that at all in games essentially um but let's just take a dive in really quickly so minecraft has volumetric water where light much like glass has an extinction value so the deeper you go into the water the darker it'll become the less it'll be lit that volume of kind of water is absorbing all the light until you essentially get pure blackness and then the camera's exposure value has to ramp up really 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 high so that you can even see the bottom here uh, if I were to oh, look wow. up, I would be probably blinded in the real life, but this is a video game, so. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, like, you can go all the way down. From the top, we couldn't even see the bottom because light could not penetrate this far. Well, keep in mind with the exposure value adjustment, I mean, that's specifically for our screens' yes. benefit because our eyes have their own sort of exposure compensation through the size of your pupil and everything, opening and closing and. You know, we just see things differently than what a monitor could realistically display. Yeah, I'm going to go up though now because you can see that then it's great light kind of gradually comes in. And if I look down, you can barely see the bottom. In fact, you can't. So it's really cool. And see, the thing is, though, is like a lot of this stuff, you can point to examples of games that try to simulate this, but it's usually it's it's almost entirely just faked basically yeah and art is a very powerful tool and you can you can simulate certain elements uh that way Mm -hmm. but the fact that everything is being generated sort of computationally here is kind of the real game changer because it just allows for more flexibility when actually building worlds and maps and what what have you uh and it just looks visually pleasing and also consistent it's naturally doesn't come with a yeah, it's it's natu- yeah. It's naturally visually pleasing, and I'm not an artist um, <laughs> at all. And I think this room, in sp- you know, not to say that I did anything really great here, but I have no experience with these things. And I just honestly thought the entire time, how does the real world work? And I kind of designed my house around those things, trying to show off effects that I thought would happen in the real world, and they just also happen to happen in Minecraft now that it's path trace. Uh, and I think another cool way to show that off is in the next room so this is glass obscuring light and the glass itself is kind of transparent white so it doesn't affect the color that much other than darkening it in the next room over i wanted to show off how that can affect glass color can affect the transmission of light completely so this wall right here is actually just white concrete nothing special about it 
but the windows letting in light have a number of kind of colored glass segments in front of them, uh, which then obviously tint the color of light going through them. So you can see that the light here on the wall is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Oh, wow. And let's go up there right now to see what's kind of happening. So like anything else, uh, the way actually, let me show, get down here on the ground really quickly. One thing that you'll see that's really cool is even the volumetric light going through the glass is also by impacted color. by the color of the glass. So it's green right now, there. that I've never seen Blue. Before. That's incredible. If you think about it, you could set up your own kind of church oh, wow. mosaic if you wanted, where the light is affecting the color of things below it, you know, like you would see in an old kind of Gothic church. Um, but yeah, I was kind of thinking like you could simulate some of this using like light maps or something, but like the totality of it all yeah. is really impressive. And you here. can see here, I have stacked a number of oh, <laughs> green yeah. and blue. How so many, how many blocks deep is that glass? It's there? about it's difficult four to tell. or so, uh, four, I think on each side. So that's why it's really distorted background here. <laughs> uh, so but like anything, it follows color theory and the fact that light is going to transmit through it. So let's take, for example, what is this? Orange right here. Hmm. Let's make orange. So I'm going to really quickly uh, switch to a red block if I find one. Here, this looks uh, red to me. And I'm going to mm -hmm. get rid of this. Boop. And now you can see that that's more pure yellow on the ground. It's actually got a little bit less bright. And I'm going to place this. That's, that's due to the glass behind you. Yep. This is there's which is yellow, yellow glass behind me. And tint. I'm going to yes. put okay. a red glass down in front of the yellow glass where light is streaming through it. As you can see now, it actually changed it to be orange. Wow. So you can affect the color of the light by mixing and matching and actually additively changing color, much like you would do with a paintbrush or kind of like you do in a program where you'd like add an opacity layer uh, in Photoshop in front of something to make it um, like more red. Yeah, I mean, you can do like you can blend colors together already, but the way this is doing it computationally is really quite impressive. Yeah, as you can see there, like it's orange and red and I'll get rid of this and I'll make it Oop. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh. Makes it less red, instead more pure, like the sun color, mixed a little bit with red, and then you throw it on top again, and then it becomes more red. And obviously, you can do that with really cool things like blue. Let's make some more violetish colored thing, because it's the blue mixing from the outside, mixing with red to get a kind of purplish hue. Or wow. oh, let's make this purple a bit more red. Or let's make brown. Why not? Brown's hideous. Uh, well, at least in this game it is. Uh, so like it's green with white and now it's brown. I think this is just so cool. I mean, there's so many yeah, awesome things amazing. that you could imagine game developers could do. Like there, there could be puzzles based upon this in some sort of adventure style game where you're trying to kind of Indiana Jones style mix and match light to open up a tomb passage or something like that. Or just even for Minecraft dungeons in a game like this, there's so many really interesting things that could happen by mixing it and matching light around. Now let's go on to the next area. Whoop, I accidentally destroyed my door. Well, oh, I feel like that door <laughs> looks like the uh, Final Fantasy VII remake door without <laughs> texture filtering. Uh, yeah, it's uh, probably higher res than that, actually. Uh, this area is just really creepy because I'm looking over a, a gorge in between my house and a mountain cave. There's a, actually a really big mountain above me. And down below, which mm. goes really far down, you can see the light bouncing down until there's pure blackness. And I think there's a, a sheep in there or maybe yeah, a wolf. He's, he's down there. <laughs> uh, but here in these rooms, I want to show off kind of what happens with specular lighting and some really neat tricks that really can only happen in a game that's path traced. So uh, that hallway is actually less interesting. It's just very uh, showing off how light transmission affects the color of uh, the, uh, the volumetric lighting. Like if you go down here, you can see it's all oh, cool. Yeah mixed oh, yeah, that's really Power Rangers colors. <laughs> um, but let's go back across to the other side. Boop. Now, in this room uh, coming ahead, I have two doors. We're going to go on the right-hand side door first. Uh, 
Okay. Whoops, I didn't want to do that, but I keep forgetting okay. the controls. Oh, look at this. Yeah, so oh. now in this room, I set up a kind of bunch of emissive materials, which are locks that give off lighting. And in this case, they're slight, they're white with a tiny little bit of, it's a little hard to see here, but they have a slight uh, border around them, which makes that their reflection have that kind of look into it where you can see in between the individual blocks of light. But here you can see the reflection where I wrote digital foundry or DF kind of, what is that backwards and upside down? Yeah, exactly. And th then, then the reflection turns it right side up, of course. So like we're used to seeing uh, on this very, very uh, polished uh, wood floor. But that isn't actually the interesting thing in this room. Anyone could do that really in any game. You can do that nowadays with like light maps, but you look at the other side of the wall. I put a little hole in the wall to represent a pinhole uh, to kind of make a projector. This is projecting light through into the other room. You've built a camera obscura. Yeah, I have. And now we're going to go into the other room. I think we tested this in the original Gamescom version as well. Yeah, yeah, we did. I recall. No. This is a... Let's see this. Here let's we go. Open it up. Now, if you look in this room, you can see... Oh how the digital foundry, which was upside down and backwards in the other room, is now right side up and being projected through to this side. Wow. Uh, which I find amazing. The, the, this, this was used yeah. historically by like artists to um, capture the world so they can more easily draw it, um, for example, on like paper or something like that. Wow, uh, this is so, it's interesting, the temporal aspect. Oh yeah, so like this is made from, <laughs> this is obviously a lot of bounced light coming around. Yeah. So it's much like, it's like the last couple bounces of light usually making this up probably. And the fact but that this room's very dark doesn't help. Isn't adaptive as you said, yeah. uh, it, they still, you know, this is kind of like worst case scenario, I think, for it. <laughs> worst case scenario, but at the same time, it's doing something that nothing, this cannot be done Insane. in any yeah, other game. This is amazing. Um, maybe Quake 2 path tracing to, could do it as well, too. Um, but it doesn't have the irradiance cache, which uh, obviously allows up to eight bounces like you see here. So, or seven, I think it is. Um, so let's actually go up here. And show so this is like any other light in the game it can be affected by transmission so it can go through like a red glass block for example like you see here and all of a sudden and digital foundry is now deep voila. red voila you know like back in the old days they used to put gels in front of the camera uh to color grade scenes and things like that or they would dip you know like the film in the end uh, into like uh, different mixtures to like make in like this day of silent film. This is like real physics of how film and projection works it's amazing. working in the real world, uh, or at least the real world of Minecraft, uh, which I found just really darn neat. And obviously you can do this. This really kind of changes everything about Minecraft for me as well, where it's just like, this is engaging stuff to play with Whoops. in a way that I've not usually found typical Minecraft to be. Oh, you can see how, just okay, so I accidentally oh. enlarged the pinhole. And now that what that does is it kind yep. of like transforms the size of the projection. Now it's not anamorphic. This is like what it would look like uh, on the, re on the what is it, the aspect ratio of a phone. It's being projected at the wrong aspect ratio, essentially. <laughs> so it's no longer uh, square, but overly tall, taller and skinnier, which is really funny. And obviously it loses coherence in between those areas now that were one block uh, diff like one block. Uh, pixel size on the yep. other side, which I just find so cool that that is even possible. So the future um, yeah. Let's go back down here. How do I forget the controls in uh, how to use that on the controller so often? Um, but we're kind of coming up on our last room here and I wanted to show off a couple things the fact that emissive lights don't just need to be white like I showed in that room uh, but also the fact that they can kind of be any color that you want. So oh, here, setting up the entirety of the rainbow using these weirdo colored blocks that they have that replace, I think, the terracotta blocks in the game. And you can see them wow. kind of mixing in. So like on the wall, they're like a very stark difference. But because light is bouncing around so many times, you see perfect transitions, kind of like you would see in a rainbow yeah. in between it's the incredible. colors. And it's very, but very gradual. 
and you can see how it's just the stark line between the different emissive blocks but the light that they project blends together like you say it's it's perfect yeah yeah that's wow that's really really beautiful yeah i'm a look at that big fan of taking advantage of this effect if i if i probably made a like a, a sci-fi map i'd probably take advantage of these blocks a lot and they go obviously into like white and then slightly off white here like a beige color yeah now this is kind of what the second last cool. thing that I want to show off in the game is the fact that so there's normal kind of semi-reflective materials that like we saw earlier like the gold oh I see what you but this yeah, is a yeah. perfect mirror these basically don't exist in real life more yeah, or less this cannot exist. <laughs> um, but <laughs> this is just a surface that will keep bouncing light at infinitum obviously for performance reasons they cap the number of reflections that can be sent out in one frame uh, to basically like eight layers deep uh, there's like the primary yeah, bounce and then like seven layers or whatever um yeah. so here you can see i don't have a character model but you can see my box hand reflected in yep, the mirror yep. eight times over and you can do a lot of really funny things like that with this probably for setting up puzzles in the game if you really wanted to but let's go into the last room if we can Whoop. that's okay yeah and so this room just wants to show off kind of one last feature about how these emissive blocks work off here. The entire block is more or less uh, a single color. Yep. In this room, the block can have per pixel emissive. So each tiny pixel on this texture right here, which are actually much um, smaller. So they're like, it looks like eight by eight. Yeah. Cute. Like each block is made up of eight by eight pixels then. And each one is emissive here. It, it te could technically be up to the max uh, texture resolution size that I think this version of the oh, game supports. Right, right, it could be right, something okay, like 1024 yeah. by 1024, or maybe even higher. Okay. So each pixel pixel could have a different color of emissivity. So it could give off wow. different colors of color of light based upon uh, that initial texture. So if you look here at the the ground texture, you can see that each little bit of pixel there changes the color. Uh, on the ground right next to it and also subsequently even though it is very small bounces around the entire room theoretically you could simulate like an led panel array i suppose 100 percent textures and you could actually yeah like man there's so much potential for this using redstone you could probably make animations with this like yeah, no exactly. joke switching between the blocks an animated led billboard of sorts yeah and it, there's so many crazy things you could end up doing with this um but obviously like everything earlier the way it affects different materials and their reflectivity is really cool. Like here you can see on the gold blocks, the reflections here of the blues turn green. It's amazing. If you look at them, which I just absolutely love. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my path tracing fun house that I set up for this version of the game, showing off the very specific features that this adds over what we've possibly seen in the past. And also just kind of how it generally looks like this is using just a small fraction of the HD textures that they had. I only made this in about one day and the community can make HD textures and PBR textures if they want kind of following some rules about how you set up the texture and importing into them a game much like you, d you can do in the Java and Bedrock versions. Uh, but yeah, it looks really darn neat and I'm just going to be spending a whole lot of time with this version of the game um, when it comes out in full. Uh, but John, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about thank you for Minecraft taking RTX. me on a tour. Yeah, of I know, your, right? uh, Lovely home. Yeah, I know. Only if I lived in a home that looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, pretty darn neat. Obviously, not very practical. There are no bathrooms, but you know, who needs those uh, things? That's true. You know? uh, well, down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Just go over the edge. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Thank you very much for joining me and thank you for watching this video. And if you really did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you like this video and you want to see it in higher quality, please consider supporting us on Patreon to get this video as a download and backlogs of years of content from Digital Foundry at the highest quality available. If you want to talk to John or myself about Minecraft RTX or what's possible in this version of the game, please write a comment below or follow John and myself on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex bidding you auf Wiedersehen und farewell.